the engine. Praise God. When I push the button, it's going. It's going. All right. Praise I'm God. I'm sorry. Well, it's all right. It's, it's all right. right. It's okay. The uh, Let's pray for our pastor tonight. Pray for all of us. We made that journey out to East Missouri. And like all Florida boys, we just cannot get used to that cold weather. <laughs> it was 30 degrees there and uh, no top coats. And uh, we uh, we learn quick that uh, you, when you get out of the car, you've got to make tracks and get inside. And so all of us, uh, you know, we have some going on and I apologize for that. I sound very nasal tonight. Yes, nasal. Wasn't my plan to be here, but I'm here by God's grace and I hope that uh, you know you will you will indulge me in uh, you know my nasal tone. <laughs> but we'll get through it. And I Amen. told Brother Marlowe, I said it makes very little sense. He said, Well I can come and be there and I said no. Mm -hmm. Makes very little sense for you to come out too. You just stay home and rest. So how many will pray for your pastor tonight? Yes. The Lord will let him have rest. And I'm sure that um, we can uh, get through and we can share the good word of God together and celebrate uh, his resurrection and uh, the fact that he built a church and we're part of it. And so we're going to. We're going to pray, continue to pray. I'm sure there's a lot of needs I'm unaware of tonight. As I said, pray for the ministry, trying to get back and plugged in. Uh, pray for those that uh, are connected to Brother uh, Bernard's home. He went on, crossed over, I understand, while we were gone. And uh, I know that, uh, you know, that's a heavy heart. I've been through that. I'm sure all of you at some point in time in our life, we've uh, you know, had that. And, and uh, so let's pray the Lord will lift them and encourage the family of the Bernard, uh, of, you know, uh, Brother Bernard in his passing. And then they tell me you're going to have a test coming up, Brother Gene. So we're going to pray for you. And, and, and that's coming up this week. It's next Monday. Next Monday. How many will agree with us and pray that uh, uh, God yes. will make a way? And that just seems like it uh, would be, you know, not part of the plan of God after he brought him so far not to complete it. Now I believe that he will complete it, and I believe you'll be all right, but I know the prayer of God's people will help you through it. The Bible said the effectual, fervent prayer of a righteous man uh, does what? It says it available. It says, you know, that God hears it. And we believe that. And the angel came to Cornelius, didn't he? That's not my Bible study. I'm just warming the car up, you know. But, and uh, the angel came to uh, uh, Cornelius, and he told him in Acts chapter 10, he said, your prayer has, has uh, set before me. Uh, it's set before me as a memorial. And there this man was praying and God, uh, you know, moving on Peter in the housetop of Joppa. And both of those events coming together. Isn't it wonderful when the natural meets the supernatural? Something always happens, don't it? Praise yes, God. Yes, Amen. Yes, it does. Anytime the natural meets the supernatural, and we're getting somewhere and just might be tonight that God will allow the natural to meet the supernatural Why, yes. and help us get past anything we might have going on. I kind of feel it now kind of running up and down a little bit. Will the natural meet the supernatural? Yes. Great things happen, don't they? Yes. Praise yes. God. So yes. anyway, we we believe God will pray. Any other needs, Brother Dale? I, was, I got your call today, just busy, going to try to get by and see about you, just catching up on loose ends before I called you. I said, Lord, I'll call him before I go to sleep tonight. And here he is. Amen. The Lord, let him come. I appreciate seeing you tonight. He's You're the dear one. He's been sick for two days. Been under the weather. Well, he gets these spells on his head and he can't get up. But he goes for his shoulder 
have his shoulders checked out Wednesday. And then he'll pray for him. Praise God. And I, I ask you to pray for me. I've had something going on my heel here, and or, or not my heel, my ankle actually. And and uh, on this trip, I had a little mishap, and it turned it over again. After all that I had tried to recover, and so I. Uh, I just couldn't walk when I got back from this trip. I just couldn't walk. I put ice on it Saturday night and Sunday and appreciate you all indulging me and Brother Marlowe using an extreme amount of patience with me and staying home and and uh, so, but it, it, uh, it helped. But by the end of the day, I noticed it's still not right. So I've got an appointment Thursday with the doctor and myself to check into that. Pray everything will come out all right. I don't have time to be tied down and and uh, hobbling around. But uh, anyway, I do want it right. I'm too young, Sister Carol, to, uh, you know, be uh, set back with something like that or hindered, uh, you know. And just pray God will give me the answer on that ankle. And by the time the end of the day is here, that swollen down around my shoes, I know that's not right. That's not... That's not the way it ought to be, uh, especially when you're at a young age of 62 like I am. Well, I need a, I need a touch. Amen. I need the Lord's touch. Amen, Brother Butch. You might want to pass on about uh, Sister Melina. Yes, let's pray for Sister Melina. She had surgery, but not to report she had surgery, That's but yet said yes. she still is in need and can't do anything till the 19th. So she went to her sister's house to recuperate and do some rehabilitating there. So let's pray for Sister Melina sitting in the back of the house, uh, I think, all weekend. Let's pray the Lord will give her a healing. She's a young woman, and pray the Lord is able to. Uh, I know he is. I know he's able to do it. Let's just pray that he finishes it. All right, any other needs, Sister Arlene? Unspoken. How many have somebody on your heart tonight, a need? Uh, a situation. Yes. yes, I do too. I, I have that on my yes. heart. And uh, I know that God hears us. I had a smart aleck when I pastored uh, in the church. Uh, I was a young man, just 26 years old, out pastoring. And had a smart aleck in the church. I was taking prayer requests like that. And I said, how many have an unspoken need? And uh he said, well, that's not in the Bible. He said, the Bible said, make your request known to God. And I said, well, it also says he reads the very thoughts and the intent of our heart. Yeah. And, and so, uh, and it also said, cry aloud and spare not. Amen. <laughs> so let's call on him tonight. Can we yeah. do that? Brother John, yeah. will you help me pray tonight? And, oh, and, uh, <laughs> Brother Hank, can you all help me pray? Yeah. All right, let's pray. Father, we come Father before Jesus, you right Jesus, now. Jesus. Lord, we come before you. Jesus, Jesus, we ask you, dear God. Oh, God, that you would just perform a miracle, Lord. These needs tonight we are so desperately longing to have an answer for. God, touch our respiratory problem, people. Oh, God, we pray that you touch our pastor tonight. Jesus, continue to touch his prodigal tubes, Lord. Oh, God, let him be all right. Give him rest in his body, Lord. I pray, Lord. Brother Gene, quiet tonight, Lord. Next week, God, let it just be a breeze. Let it just be easy. Come through that procedure, Lord. Your spirit carrying us, your spirit leading us. Oh, God, I praise you tonight, Lord. Pray for Brother Dale tonight, Lord. I pray that the power of God, the anointing of God, release your power tonight. Release your anointing tonight, Lord. Healing, healing, Lord. Healing during the study of the word, Lord. God, you're capable of healing him right now. My God. Oh God, let me let me believe you for myself, Lord. Touch my ankle, Lord. God, need me, I would just cancel the doctor's appointment. Lord. Oh God, that the power of God would just drive it from me. Oh God, that I would just know without a shadow of a doubt that you're taking care of it, Lord Jesus. 
Lord, we pray for the loss of family, Brother Bernard. Oh, God, in this Bible study and prayer meeting tonight, Lord, let us be a people and pray. Oh, God, we're conscious of prayer, Holy Ghost prayer, Lord. Meet our needs, answer from heaven. Touch our hearts, touch our lives. In Jesus' name, everybody said, praise the Lord. Just give him a wave offering tonight. Praise God, we thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We praise you, Lord. Blessed be you, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Praise God. Glory to God. Praise the Lord. Well, we welcome you to uh, gather around the, the most uh, powerful book in the universe. And if we can approach the Word of God by faith tonight, if perhaps uh, He could meet us, could be the Lord would meet a need that uh, would help us to discover his will, maybe a little clearer, and we'd be able to, we met with about 30 pastors in uh, East uh, mm -hmm. Missouri, and if I, if I detected it right, if I had the right heart, and I, I believe I did, I went with my mind open, the spirit, there's a longing in the hearts of men, pastors, to see their churches blessed of yes, God. Yes, thank you, Jesus. We know we're living in perilous times. We know we're living in difficult times. We Amen. We're living in, in, you know, Bible times of famine. The Bible talks about famine. What it does, it's not always talking about a natural famine. It's talking about, talking about a spiritual condition that we have to get through. Come on. And we're working towards some of the questions uh, uh, on the floor. Is there a latter rain? Have we believed something? Will the church be restored? These are, these are things that uh, all of my life, 47 years now, I find it hard to believe, but 47 years that I've studied God's Word, and I haven't just played with it. I've studied it and said under the great men of God. And uh, I, we either have to come to the place that we believe it or we don't believe it. We have to come to the place to where it's, uh, you know, right or wrong. And uh, it, it, if the church is going to be restored, then I pray that, uh, you know, we'll find that total, that total move. The church will move toward that restoration, the brethren working on it. The world says prove it and I'll believe it. God says believe it and I'll prove it. Praise God. Amen. Believe it and I'll prove it. So I, I say, I say, let's believe. Let's and you know, the conditions, that's part, somebody asked me uh, if, if that was my heart. I'd like to begin tonight, I really, I don't know, we may talk on uh, various things. We could be a few minutes, uh, could, you know, that the Lord would give us. I'd like to begin in Luke chapter eight. I've been, uh, lately I've been fascinated and uh, we'll start there and open it up of course anybody that would have something they could contribute can always do that that's the order we've always had uh, we teach subject to question I always say we don't teach subject to argument we teach subject to question uh, but it, we teach where we can answer any question uh, I know the Bible said, debate thy cause with thy brother. I believe that's in the Bible, but I don't think that godly debate is like uh, like you see on the stages of the Republican uh, committee or any other uh, political debate. When you debate the Word of God, you're trying to find that, sifting it through, getting rid of the chaff and trying to find the wheat and sifting it through and trying to see what God... Uh, will use, he said, whose fan is in his hand, and he'll thoroughly purge the floor and gather his wheat uh, into the uh, garner, but the chaff he will burn with, with unquenchable far fire. So uh, we know that, that that's, that's what's going on with the Word of God. But um, I've been touched a little bit. Thank you so much. Uh, I've been touched a little bit in Luke chapter 8. Look at verse 40. I think uh, if we like God's people, uh, the ministry of Jesus is uh, a very valuable 
study, I would urge you, if you're a Bible student at all, study the ministry of Jesus. And watch what happened to Jesus. Watch how he handled uh, conditions. And, and it says in verse 40 that the people were all waiting for him. This is after that great healing, you know, the Gadarenes and the devils being cast out of this man and Jesus taking him on. And I thought tonight when I was just praying a minute before I just had a few minutes to pray before coming over here. Uh, I, I thought, Lord, I, I, I want to wait on you. I want to be like these people at the country of the Gadarenes, that, uh, that my heart would be ready for you. And the Bible said, for it came to pass that when Jesus returned, that the people gladly received him. You don't see that today. We don't. That's not something you see today. There's not a lot of glad... Uh, the Word of God is uh, being stifled right now. I saw the other day, not long ago, uh, in, in Europe, they're now closing big synagogues, closing big uh, churches. At one time, the Reformation, on the hills of the Reformation, the great, great revival, the Welch revivals, and those great revivals that swept through Europe, they're closing the doors. And uh, uh, they call it unsanctifying them. Yeah. And when they close the church, they justify it by saying they unsanctify that church. Yeah. Isn't that a shame? That's a shame. Right, Lord. But we want to find a way to keep the church open. We want to find a way to keep the church doors open where uh, that we can uh, see God's people on every level. We had a meeting today. We're trying to find ways to see that the church on every level is touched by God. The purpose, everything we do from this Bible study to the meetings we have, to the band practices, to the choir practices, why do we do it? We do it that Christ could be made manifest in our midst, that we could find a way to get Christ manifested, put Jesus on the throne in, in our heart uh, to you know make a celebration out of it. And if we're just reaching one, I was touched last night with those young people. Do you oh, see that? Yeah. How God just, I, I was so hungry for that. Yes. That young lady opened her mouth and then brother, that brother coming uh, here, just a wonderful, refreshing talk he made to us. And, and then his wife coming up and singing, I have a vision of Jesus. Yes. It just began to push back walls, didn't it? You could, Amen. You could tell Amen. that God was in that. We yeah. ought to strive for that, yeah. to see that Christ is manifested. Yeah. You know, I, I have to kind of stand up for the preachers a little bit. They say, well, you know, if you get up in 10 minutes, you don't hit oil, you might sit down. Well, maybe not. Maybe if you'll pray for a preacher, he might hit it in 12 minutes. It could be that, <laughs> could be that the Lord would, you know, he could get in there in 15 minutes to do something. I told him here while back, you can't even sell an insurance policy in 10 minutes. You're going to give me 10 minutes to preach the gospel? You're wasting your time. I'd rather sit down and not preach the gospel. The truth. But yes. how many want to hear the word of God? Oh, yes. You guys, oh, we yes. need that place. You can pray for one yes. another. Yes. And that young lady began to sing last night. The glory of God came in here. Yes. Yes. And it began to it began to make it began to make things My God. open things up. Yeah. Yes. And so I, I've been on a quest, and I've been studying the ministry of Jesus over again. Notice, I want you to point. I just want to show you how how Jesus didn't preach according to some time clock. That's right. He didn't get up and prepare uh, his schedule. And bless God, nobody's mm -hmm. going to cause me to alter my schedule. I've got it written out, and nobody can alter it. I want you to notice here in verse 40, and we'll read down a little bit. It said the people were waiting for him. And behold, there came a man. Now this was the, the largest religious order, the largest religious institution of his day. The, there came a man named Jairus, who was a ruler of the synagogue. It fell down at Jesus' feet, verse 41, Luke 8. And besought him that he would come into his house, for he had only one daughter. 
about 12 years of age. And she lay a dying. But as he went, the people thronged him. And a woman having an issue of blood, 12 years, which had spent all of her living upon physicians, neither could be healed of any, came behind him and touched him and touched the borders of his garment and immediately her issue of blood was stopped and Jesus said who touched me let me let me pause here oh, yeah. see he's dealing with Jairus yes. now if we was in the modern world they say whoa wait a minute it's not Get your it. turn Get back. Mm -hmm. you wait your turn but he's he's down there talking to Jairus about his daughter who by the way was dying and there came at that time, look how flexible he is. If we don't change our heart, if we don't begin to get things where we can minister to any condition uh, that would walk through the door, any circumstance that might come up, any situation uh, that would come up, we're going to miss out on look at how Jesus handled his ministry. Amen. And I believe that, that, that's, that that's a picture. These things are written for our learning and for our admin for our admonition that we through patience and comfort of the scripture might have hope. So I think these things are there for us to see. Look how flexible he was. Yes, and how that um, he said, who touched me? And when all denied Peter and they that were with him said, Master, the multitude thronged thee and pressed thee and sayest thou, who touched me? And Jesus said, somebody hath touched me, for I perceive, for I perceive that yes. virtue Power. is gone out of me. Yes. Virtue is anointing. Yes. Circle that, put it in your Bible. That, that is anointing. Yes. Virtue was the anointing. Yes. Virtue was that, uh, you can write this down, put it in your Bible, Acts 10, 38, how God anointed Jesus with the Holy Ghost and with power went about doing good, healing all that were pressed of the devil, for God was with him. God anointed him. Jesus was the anointed rock, the anointed Christ of the church. And what a powerful, a powerful anointing rested upon him. And so I think we, would, we should look at his ministry. And if we can, mimic it. Try, try to duplicate it. Try to see where we can find a way to duplicate it, and uh, right that that means from the foundation up. That means uh, somebody asked me, "Well, what scriptures do we have? Is there any clear scriptures that this is the body of Christ? Is there any any clear scriptures on how to build a church or how uh, how we're to have a church?" You know, I got to thinking about that. And I thought, well, well, there's a lot of places. You know, we could quote a lot of scripture. But do we have clear evidence? I'm getting ready to give you a nugget. Everybody say, give me a nugget. <laughs> uh, I, 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 I'm getting ready to drop one in your lap uh, that's hidden in, in this Bible. And uh, because the ministry of Jesus, the Bible said he's the forerunner. It, it says that Jesus went before the church. Absolutely. It said he's the firstborn of them which slept. That he's in front of the church. He's never behind the church. He's the head of the church. He's not He's not down here in the feet member. He's the head of the church. There he is. And so if he's the head of the church, then what, how did he do it? And this is how he dealt with people. He, he, wasn't, he wasn't aggravated when somebody interrupted him. No. Brother Ray, he was able to heal that dear woman. Yep. And he stopped Jairus and said, let me let me deal with this, and then you can read it. I don't want to take too long because I want to go to John chapter 20 here in a minute. But this uh, man come running up to him and said, well, you don't have to worry. He said, the daughter is dead. You go down to verse uh, 47, 48. He said, uh, well, he said, you know, uh, thy daughter is dead. But look how Jesus answered. Daughter, and he, he said, uh, you know, um, he, he said, no, she's, she's not dead. In verse 48, he said, daughter, daughter, be of good cheer. Thy faith hath made thee whole. Go in peace. 
Well, he absolutely spoke the word in that girl. Thank God for the spoken word. You can speak the word of God. How many spoke it over a fever and seen it gone? Have you ever spoke it over a sick body? You ever laid hands on yourself? You ever seen God? I, I've done it many times when I didn't know what to do. Sister Carol, in the middle of the night, I'd lay hands on my body and I'd say, Oh, God, you made me. Oh, God, you created me. Lord, you're able to touch me and I can't get to a doctor. I feel the Holy Ghost all over me. Tonight. I feel the anointing. And Lord, I, I'm not able to get there, but touch me. Sister Shirley, how many times have we done that? We've done it. I don't know how many times. But has he ever failed to meet your need? Not one time. Never. He's always been there. Never. Now, I, I, want to, um, I want to go to John 20. I want to show you uh, something the Lord showed me. Um, it, uh, it's a good study. And that, that's what this is. It's a study. And, and uh, I'll maybe piecemeal it, try to get it to you. Maybe a little piecemeal, but maybe not. If the Lord can uh, help us with it. And we can see that, uh, you know, God wanted to do something. The backdrop of this is that Jesus was risen from the dead. And I want you to go down to... Uh, John, the latter part of John, St. John chapter 20. And Jesus had resurrected from the dead. All of you know that. The angels bore witness of it. The Bible said one was at the head. The other one was at the foot. And they were looking into that sepulcher there. And, and uh, that, uh, you know, Mary was instructed. Then that the angels instruct Mary say to Mary he's not here but he's risen and she was instructed in verse 18 to go tell the disciples now we this is the first meeting I want you to write this down if you're taking notes this is the first church service and we're mm -hmm. gonna uh, I want I want to show you this this is a church service what what do we have any scriptures in the Bible and what about this order what was what were they doing? This is the first service that we have recorded. Jesus told them to go to the upper room, didn't he? And they told them to meet together. This was a little premature of that, but he still was they were together. And in this meeting that was going on here, I want to point out the things that you have to see. Many years ago, Brother Wyatt, you remember, I know you probably do, go back a uh, long time. They passed out when I was a kid, about 17, what they called earmarks of the body of Christ. And they put them all together for us, you know. Well, I found some earmarks right here that wasn't in that book. Amen. That's why you got to read your Bible. You can't just read a book, uh -huh. but you gotta, you got to read the Bible. The greatest thing I can tell you today is fall in love with this Bible. Fall in love with every bit of it. It'll cover you from sin. It'll save you from heartache. And if you do have a problem, have me believe you can put a little medicine. You could take the leaves of this book and they beat them. The leaves of the tree were beaten. And they formed a salve that they put. Hallelujah. Praise God. They, they put a salve on them. And we need to beat these leaves until we can get some healing salve coming out of it to apply it to the wounds of God's people. There's a lot of wounded people. There's a lot of wounded conditions, as I started to say earlier. You know, I, I might just back up a little bit and come right back. I promise I will. But if, if we're living in, in the time of great famine, and I, when we were studying Amen. this in a minister's meeting, God gave me something. Look at uh, 1 Kings 18. All of you are very familiar with it. Uh, and I promise I'm, I'm just augmenting it uh, using this as the condition, needing needing a church, needing medicine. And um, this uh, famine, I want you to I want you to understand famine uh, is uh, is a byproduct of no rain, really, when you stop think about it. You say, well, uh, where is the latter rain? Well, the condition necessitates that there be a latter rain. If if uh, if we preach a latter rain, if there was a former rain, what brought the former rain? If there was a harvest, 
uh, in the early church, Revelation chapter 12. I'm not moving you all over. Just listen to this. You can go back and get it. The Bible said there was a harvest made up. And that, that uh, woman was, that is, that uh, was caught up to God in his throne. That was the early harvest. That man child, the part of that man child, that woman in Revelation chapter 12, he said, I saw a woman clothed with the, uh, with the uh, sun, son of the New Testament, the moon under her feet, and upon her head, head a crown of 12 stars, and she travailed in birth until she be delivered. And then it talks about another wonder in yeah. there. It said, a great red dragon having seven heads and ten horns. And scarlet color began to uh, rage war. That's the sixth head of the beast there. And it raged war against this woman and against her child to yeah. devour the child as soon as it was born. Well, there was a harvest. There were people that actually made it. Somebody said nobody made it back there. Oh, that that isn't it, so. Brother. People made it. Yep. People gave up their lives and they ran to the fires. They ran to the crosses. Yep. Nero took uh, uh, people and uh, took their, hung them out on his torches and used them to light up his, uh, his gardens at night. Yes. The Christians I'm talking about. Yes. Yes. And uh, lampooned and lamb blasted them, put them through persecution. Yes. And yet the church, uh, you know, believes that uh, there, there won't be anything happen. We're just going to skate through this thing. It's a cakewalk. No, get ready to fight the devil. Get ready to come against the enemy. Uh, get ready to, you know, I, I believe God will take the church out. I believe the church will be delivered out. Yes. But uh, you you won't be unscathed. Uh, your family won't be unscathed. But the blood of Jesus, the same blood that applied to Israel back there, can be applied now. It's